Hello everyone, welcome back to Fulgrim Gaming's Let's Play of Kingdom Hearts. In the last episode, we completed the Deep Jungle, and in this episode, we actually need to get back to Traverse Town. But, we can't just go straight there. No, we have to go through Wonderland or Olympus Coliseum. I almost forgot what it was called, but I'm just going to go this way, and I'm actually going to speed this up, because we've seen these paths several times, and it's not really necessary to see them every time I do them. And there we have Traverse Town. And by the way, guys, I think I might have mentioned this in the last episode, but the episode where I made that gummy ship that looked horrible, not that this one looks any better or anything, but I did actually have to restart somewhere along the line. So I did actually end up making a different gummy ship than you might have seen in that episode, but it's really not that big of a deal. Now, the first thing I'm going to do before I forget, and I know I have to do this now or I am going to forget, is equip the new Keyblade, the Jungle King. And as you can see in the bottom, it has a long reach, but seldom deals critical blows. In my opinion, that's not really that bad of a trade-off, because look at the, the strength increase that we get. So each you know swing of the blade is going to be doing more damage. The fact that it has a longer reach and it does you know fewer critical hits isn't that bad of a trade-off. Also, I'm going to go ahead and equip the Sonic Blade ability on Sora, and I believe, yeah, MP Haste on Donald and something on Goofy. Apparently, well, wait, he doesn't have the the ability I want to teach him yet. He's going to learn something else called Tornado, probably in this episode. But first, I'm going to actually go buy a whole bunch of items, I believe. Yeah, I guess I'll do that. I was going to say maybe I could wait before the, there's going to be a boss fight in this episode, actually. But I'm going to go ahead and do it now. So I'm going to see you guys in a second. Well, that was a waste of time because I had way, way fewer money. Fewer money? Less money? I'm not sure. That's weird. But I had a whole lot less money than I thought I did, so I only ended up buying like two potions and an ether. But at the beginning of the game, we woke up like right here when we took control of Sora and Traverse Town for the first time. And I think I pointed out the fact that there was this red trinity over here. But now that we've actually learned the ability, we can, you know, do the trinity. And the red trinity is all about smashing into things, which I think is kind of funny. Especially in a second when we do the next one, which... We actually don't crash into soft, not that that wood looked really soft now that I think about it. And back here there's a, a chest full of Dalmatians. But we run into some metal grates, or metal pipes, you know, so it kind of looks, you know, pretty humorous, I guess. And another thing I just realized, two things. First of all, when we're flying the gummy ships and we take down the enemy ships, you know, they drop their pieces and stuff like that, I just realized that, it, to me, I guess it makes sense that they drop pieces because is that their ship? being torn apart or whatever, and we get the, the benefits of their ships flying apart. Never really thought about the, the grimness of that situation. We're actually killing the other people in the ships, in the enemy ships so hard we get their pieces. And also, why, I just realized, the Dalmatians are being kept in boxes, like chests. I'm surprised they don't get, you know, suffocated, or they don't suffocate in there. And we just picked up a Thundara ring, by the way, which might come in pretty handy. Maybe, I'm not going to equip it right now, probably, unless it has more defense than the items I already have. And there we go, Goofy learned Tornado, so I'm not completely crazy. But, over here there's actually another red trinity, and why, this is what I was talking about. Does that not look really, really, really painful to you guys? Back here we have the secret waterway, I think I said, I didn't actually read it before I walked in here. But, here we have Leon and Aerith. I, it, it's really hard for me to say Aerith because I was just so used to saying Eris for the Final Fantasy VII Let's Play, but we did say that we needed to talk to Leon, so let's go ahead and do that. So, you found the Keyblade. Keyhole! Yeah. The Keyblade locked it automatically. Good. Every world among the stars has a keyhole, and each one leads to the heart of that world. There must be one in this town as well. What do you mean? It was in Ansem's report. The Heartless enter through the keyhole and do something to the world's core. What happens to the world? In the end, it disappears. What? I wish I had three people here to do this moment. But haven't we seen, like, at the beginning of the game, Donald, or Goofy, 
looks up and sees Destiny Islands disappear, so he at least knew that happened. That's why your key is so important. Please lock the keyholes. You're the only one who can. I don't know. Seeing other worlds would probably serve you well. Yeah. We gotta find your friends and King Mickey. I guess you're right. Okay. Now we gotta talk to him again. I'm not sure, by the way, if they... If at this point we were supposed to know to talk to him again, we actually do get something else for talking to him again. Hey, Leon. This gummy block's different from the others. Do you know what it's for? Ask Sid. He should know. Well, that was completely, you know, useless almost, but just to redeem himself, Leon. Wait, Sora, take this with you. And we get an Earth Shine, which is actually a gem that holds mysterious power, as Leon just said there. And to unlock his power, Sora wants to know how we use it. Leon doesn't know the answer to this question either. So the way I took that scene is that Leon felt kind of bad about not knowing what that gummy shit piece was. So he's like, oh, here, take this. And then he didn't know what that did either. And he looks even embarrassed right now. Look, he's got his hand on his head right there. But if we come over here, there's actually a box of, you know, a treasure chest with Dalmatians in it again. And I think at this point, we have enough Dalmatians to go back to the Dalmatians' house and get... You know, a, a couple of rewards, actually. I think three rewards. So as soon as we come out of here, I think the to the left is going to be the Dalmatian's house, if I remember the layout of the town. Yes, indeed. And the good thing is, we don't have to worry about fighting anything to go indoors, at least. So at least they didn't make you do that to go into doors, unlike opening treasure chests. And now that I think about it, in Kingdom Hearts 2, I think you can actually open treasure chests, even if there are enemies on the screen. So I wish they'd had it like that in this game. But here we are in the Dalmatian's house, you can see that there are actually puppies all over the place. And I haven't counted, but I bet you that there are just as many Dalmatians here as we have freed from the treasure chest. So if there are, that would be kind of cool. But in the living room... Okay, never mind. In this room over here, the piano room is where we're going to meet the parents again, I think. Aww. You know, I was just gonna say, oh, I'm gonna be, I was thinking to myself, I'm gonna be quiet right now for dialogue, and then I realized dogs don't talk, so we're probably not gonna be getting any dialogue here. Luckily, I believe this is Pongo over here, is pushing a present over to us, and that looks just like the box in Wonderland that had all of the, the evidence in it, so I'm, I wonder if there is any connection somehow. I'm pro there's probably nothing of, you know, substance as far as, as the story goes, but it's kind of interesting to me. So here we have Kiraga G, Fairaga G, and Thundaraji, which two of those are weapons for gummy ships, and one has something to do with... I think Kiragaji might be a cockpit, but I'll have to... I don't remember exactly. Now, what I need to do now is actually go to the very top of the gizmo shop, and I'm gonna go the way that we all know how. Or not to the top of the... yeah, the top of the gizmo shop, so we need to actually go through the gizmo shop. There are actually gonna be some new... actually, you know what? I think I could have gone... Actually, you know what? Now, at this point, I'm gonna go back and talk to Sid. I was going to go ahead and do the Trinity on top of that thing, but I'm actually going to save that for later, because that is actually what triggers the boss fight, and I figure I might as well go back and do, you know, a little more of the, the brick and bracky things before I do the big thing in the world. So let's go back and talk to Sid. I think if we talked, no, we haven't actually talked to him, talked to him in this episode, but after we talk to him, he's not going to be the owner of the accessory shop anymore. And I always wish we could go through this door, but we have to wait till we get the green trinity to go in there. And then if you guys saw that ladder in the, in the accessory shop, I think we can go from that, you know, we can go from the back, almost like a little shortcut. Now, before I talk to Sid, here's that green trinity I was talking about, which opens up that ladder up there. But that's not really what I wanted, what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to say was, I'm not sure what this is that are traces of fire. I know you can light it here. And, but nothing really happens. I'm wondering if you have to have an upgraded fire spell for it to do anything. If not, I thought I remembered this doing something, but I'm not entirely sure. So let's go ahead and talk to Sid. What have you got there? Hey! Well, if it ain't a gummy block. Yep, that's an awesome response there, Donald, or I don't know who said that. What's this one for? You're kidding me! You're flying a gummy ship and you don't know nothing about navigation gummies? Bunch of pinheads. Space ain't, inner space ain't no playground. There's a lot we don't know. So what? We have to use the gummy ship to get to other worlds. We don't have a choice. Whoa, easy. I didn't know. No hard feelings, all right. Well, I guess I could lend y'all a hand then. Thanks. Basically, with navigation gummies, you can go to new places. You want one on your ship, right? I'll install it for you. 
But I've got this thing I gotta deliver first. What do you need to deliver? Just this book. It's real old. When the guy brought it in, it was practically falling apart. Too beat up to restore it to the way it was. But overall, I did a decent job putting it back together. Anyway, you mind delivering it for me? It's the old house past the third district. Look for a big fire sign. All right, so we get the old book. And what was that? And Sora says exactly the same thing. What was that? Hmm, the bell at the gizmo shop is ringing. Go check it out if you want, but deliver that book for me first. When you're done, stop by the house in the third district. I'll be there. Now, first of all, like, it's kind of funny how he's like, all right, you can check it out if you want, but you need to do this first. And I don't think you have to. I think you can just go to the third district if I remember, or the second district. No, wait, never mind. I was going to say you actually, I think you do have to deliver the book first. And you might be wondering what the book is. The funny thing is, I never really took... I was going to say Leon never took Sid for a reader by any means, but then it kind of clicked that he doesn't really read. He just, somebody brought in the book to him to fix. And But then why does he actually, you know, fix books? I thought he was a gummy ship extraordinaire. And to actually, to return it, we could go through that fire door that he was talking about that I showed the first time I was in Traverse Town, or we could come over during, or in the secret passageway. And I kind of hinted at it, or I don't even know if I did or not, but there is a by that chest with the Dalmatians in it, which isn't here anymore, we can actually come up the stairs and go up here to Merlin's house. So that's kind of a cool shortcut there. Oh, that book! So, Sid asked you to bring this. Thank you! You wish to know what kind of book it is? I don't even know myself. In fact, it's not mine. Somehow, it found its way into my bag one day. It was such a curious book, I asked Sid to repair it for me. Well, I guess I'll put it here somewhere, for now. This book holds a great secret. The missing pages will unlock it. I'll leave the book over there. Do look at it whenever you like. My best regards to Sid for repairing it for me. Oh, and about that stone of yours. You should ask the fairy godmother about that. And he's referring to that Earthshine gem. Do you know what this is? Oh, that poor thing. He has turned into a summon gem. A summon gem? This little creature lived in a world that was consumed by darkness. When a world vanishes, so do its inhabitants. But this one had such a strong heart, he became a gem instead of vanishing with his world. Can he regain himself? Yes, but only his spirit. Now, watch. Ah, uh, bibbidi bobbidi boo I wasn't going to do it, but I have to at this point. And we actually learn a summon spell. We can actually summon people in this game. Which I thought was kind of cool, because I did play Final Fantasy, you know, 10 first. So I thought it was kind of cool that you could summon stuff. Unfortunately, it's not like, oh, let me summon Bahamut. And it's kind of funny, actually. If you guys have played Final Fantasies, you know that Bahamut is like the big summon spell. In this game, you actually do get to summon a dragon, but it is nowhere near to that level. And I didn't mean to run into, you know, Merlin over here again, but I'm going to go ahead and save, because there is actually a boss fight coming up, like I hinted at earlier. And we need to go through the 3rd District to trigger a cutscene. But the whole thing is, I'm not sure if... Like, I think Sid said that we need to deliver that book first. I think we might have to deliver the book and watch this cutscene before the boss fight becomes available. If anybody knows, that would be kind of interesting. Like, if you guys know what I'm talking about, you'll know how to trigger the boss fight. And I'll tell you guys that don't know in a minute. But I would be kind of curious to know if you can trigger the boss fight without doing both of these things. But there's going to be a pretty awesome cutscene right here, guys. And I want you guys to enjoy it, especially if you've never played before. There you are. What's going on? Riku! Hey, hey, cut it out. I'm not dreaming this time. Right? I hope not. It took forever to find you. Riku! Wait a second, where's Kairi? Isn't she with you? Well, don't worry. I'm sure she made it off the island too. We're finally free. Hey, she might even be looking for us now. We'll all be together again soon. Don't worry. Just leave everything to me. I know this... Leave it to who? Sora, uh, what did you... 
I've been looking for you, and Kyrie too, with their help. Who are they? We visited so many places and worlds, looking for you. Really? Well, what do you know? I never would have guessed. Oh, and guess what? Sora's the Keyblade Master. Who was a target? What's that mean? So, this is called a Keyblade? Huh? Hey, give it back! Catch. Whoa. Okay, so you're coming with us, right? We've got this awesome rocket. Wait till you see it. No, he can't come. What? Forget it. Oh, come on. He's my friend. I don't care. Oh, he's gone. Riku? Nice going. Oh, well. At least he's okay. And who knows? Maybe we'll run into Kyrie soon, too. First time I saw that cutscene, I was so skeptical that Riku was actually real because we've actually we have seen Kyrie, but immediately after she disappears. So we've seen Kyrie before, but it was like almost like an apparition. So when I saw Riku for the first time, I didn't know if he was real or not. But when we come in the small house, which is where Sid told us to go after we delivered the book, we can talk to Sid for an actually a pretty important item. You guys ever hear of Maleficent? I hear she's in town. Who is she? A witch, man, she's a witch! She's the reason this town is full of Heartless. Don't take her lightly. She's been using the Heartless for years. We lost our world thanks to her. Actually, that was Leon, so he shouldn't have a high voice. One day, a swarm of Heartless took over our world. That was nine years ago. And it's kind of funny, now that I think about it, this game takes place technically nine years, I guess, after Final Fantasy VIII. It's kind of hard to explain. He's nine years older right now than he was in Final Fantasy VIII, so take that as you will. I got out of this that mess and came here with these guys. That's awful. Our ruler was a wise man named Ansem. He dedicated his life to studying the Heartless. His report should tell us how to get rid of the Heartless. Where is this report? We don't know. It got scattered when our world was destroyed. I'm sure Maleficent's got most of the pages. You see, it's just as I told you. While you toiled away trying to find your dear friend, he quite simply replaced you with some new companions. Evidently, now he values them far more than he does you. You're better off without that wretched boy. Now think no more of him and come with me. I'll help you find what you're searching for. Ah, oh, Riku looks like he's being dragged over to the dark side even more. So, you delivered that book? That navigation gummy's installed and ready to go. You find another one, you bring it to me. I threw in a warp gummy for the heck of it. Alright, so the warp G, which, I was, I was gonna explain it, but I was like, I think Sid's gonna explain it. We can jump to worlds we've never been to before. Which will make it a kind of, a tiny little bit less tedious. Actually, it makes it really painless, actually. Because we can, you know, warp between worlds, like he said, that we've been to before. I've been thinking about the bell in the 2nd District. That one that rang a bit ago? The one above the gizmo shop. There's a legend about it, you know. But it's all boarded up. Nobody can get in there. Heck, go check it out. Ring it three times to see if anything happens. What is this, Mario? We gotta do something three times. I feel like I'm jumping on the head of a Goomba. Nah. Actually, it only usually takes one, you know, stomp to defeat a Goomba, but you guys know what I mean. It seems like in Mario games, you know, three hits to the boss is like what it takes to beat it. And I think it's kind of funny how... Obviously, there's no relation between this and Mario at all, probably, but that's just what I thought of. Now, I'm probably gonna fight all of the people on the way to the top of the Gizmo Shop, just because the boss we're gonna be fighting is extremely difficult if you're a small, you know, level so i'm gonna try and maybe get one more level on the way and i'm going to cut out the fights as always i'm not cutting out maybe speed them up or something because it's going to take a long time especially when we get into the gizmo shop because you guys remember 
how many waves of enemies there are in the gizmo shop. So I'll see you guys in a minute, I guess. And by the way, before I get started on this, let me just explain this enemy right here. I forgot what he's called, Green Something. It probably is related to a song. But he drops heart, or not hearts, you know, HP when you defeat them. And he can actually heal enemies. So you want to try and take them out as fast as possible. By the way, guys, I should probably mention this as well. Here's a new enemy. I forgot what they're called. I think they're called Air Soldiers or something like that. But they're really not too much harder to defeat than the regular enemies. And also, we have the yellow version of these, which I don't think we've seen before. And I can only guess that their name also has something, you know, related to music. But I'm going to go ahead and speed this up, like I said, because it's going to take a long time. Alright guys, it looks like I took out all of the enemies in the gizmo shop, and like I said, the only reason I really did that was just to get one more level, and as you guys saw, I actually did get an extra item slot, which I wouldn't have gotten had I not chosen the shield at the beginning of the game. So, like I keep saying, I think that was one of the best choices I could have made, especially doing the game on Expert, but I think I might as well just go ahead and speed this up as well, unless they're almost- wow, they actually did already go away. Now, let me- Oh, never mind. I was gonna say, I have to take these guys out so I can do this trinity here. But, before I b fight the boss, I do need to do a little bit of item management. And I should also probably explain the fact that in the last episode, we got the blizzard- not the blizzard, the cure ability. Which is actually very, very, very useful in this game. It kind of lost its effect for me in Kingdom Hearts 2 because it took a little more magic, I guess, to use in Kingdom Hearts 2. But, as far as this game goes, let me go ahead. And on X is what I usually like to do, just put Cure. Because Cure is like it looks like, we can actually use the Cure spell instead of having to do, you know, a whole lot of items. Now, let me go ahead and let me think. Not the journal, I need to go back and see if in the options or the config. Nope, not in config. Customize, there we go. I need to turn down their usage of items, because they get absolutely re Only in emergency, how about that? There's no reason to do it immediately. Because, or, not, there's no reason to have both of them have that set. Look at that. Goofy, or Donald has MP items used immediately. I don't like that, so I'm going to put that on emergencies. Now, I need to go ahead and equip some items here, because they have nothing. And I did buy a few earlier. So we're not going to be completely desperate as far as items go in this episode. And I should have probably gave the potions to Goofy and the ethers to Donald, but oh well. Now, if I had a little more money... I could go back and get some potions for Goofy, but I don't think it's really going to be all that necessary. So let's go ahead and do this Trinity here. That has got to hurt. I I can't, that hurts me just watching that. But here we have the, like, the bell rope here. So we can actually pull this, like so. And I wanted you guys to hear the ringing of the bell, so that's why I was quiet for a second. But speaking of being quiet, what in the, why is that on fire? Man, that got kind of satanic all of a sudden. But it started raining, I really hard outside. Like, it's hard to see the other side of the road, almost. So hopefully you guys can't see that, but if you can, that is why. Now, that is two rings of the bell, and we have to pull it one more time to get the final... It's actually pretty cool when I saw it for the first time, and I think you guys might enjoy it as well. That is the keyhole for Traverse Town. And I never really, it never clicked for me when I first played the game that there was going to be a keyhole for Traverse Town. So when I came back and saw that we had to lock Traverse Town, I was like, I was, not, I'm not going to say ecstatic or anything, but I was pleasantly surprised because I think that's kind of cool how, even though this isn't really a hub world in the general, you know, traditional sense of the word, world, word, it's not that 
it's a, a special world. We have to come back here after pretty much every other world, so to be able to interact with this world in a way other than just coming back to it is actually pretty cool in my opinion. But I'm gonna go ahead and go back to the accessory shot because I need to heal at the save spot and save. Because even though I saved earlier, I'm going to try and save a little tiny bit closer to the boss fight. And as I have said a couple of times throughout this episode, the boss fight here is actually a little bit difficult, especially on Expert. And I've, tr you know, practiced a couple of times, and even I was having a little bit of trouble beating it on Expert, so hopefully I don't have too much trouble. Now, I just remembered that I got a Proterra chain, I think, it, like a drop, so I don't know why I haven't been equipping these, but I need to do that now. And I'm gonna leave that off, or I'm gonna leave the Brave Warrior on Sora, because if I put the Proterra chain on him, while his defense will go up, his HP and strength go down. So I'm gonna leave that off. Let's see if Donald and Goofy would, you know, benefit. Obviously, I'll just give it to Donald, because he's almost always dead anyway. Might as well give him some, you know, a little bit higher defense. But if we go down there and try to lock the keyhole, something pretty amazing is going to happen. An old friend is going to return. The way they present this boss fight to me is actually pretty cool, because obviously we fought this guy before and he we beat him already, and it, it, you would think that we would be able to take him down pretty easily. Look how fast he's going down. It looks like he's going to die pretty quickly, right? Unfortunately not. So guard armor turns into what I believe is called opposite armor. And opposite armor somehow is way, 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 way stronger than guard armor. And it might not look like it right now because I haven't gotten hit yet and his, you know, his HP is going down pretty quickly. But as soon as he uses some of his special attacks, I'll be, if he hits like a direct hit, you better hope you have more than just a little bit of health left. Because every time I've fought him, even his small attacks take down like half of my life bar. Which in a fight like this, is probably not good, because, well, at least I was able to save, but I've gotten in situations before where I was not able to save before this fight. I'm not sure how or if I'm just, you know, misremembering or not, but you guys definitely want to save. That's going to be the gist of the story here. And I can't believe I already took that thing down. I don't know what I killed, but it's dead, I guess. He's going to have a, a cannon attack in a second, where he, but you pretty much want to have full HP for that. Now let me go ahead and display Cure. Pretty simple, but we actually see it does raise your HP, so it's pretty useful as well. And another thing I want to show is actually the Sonic ability. Now, if I can get the the command to appear down here, I'll use it. There we go. Now, it's not too much use on this boss, but it actually, now it looks like it kind of is, because it is doing quite a bit of, you know, damage to him. While I didn't think it was going to be able to reach him, which is why I said that in the first place. But if you can... Use the Sonic ability whenever you can on this boss in particular, because, oh man, I'm running. See, don't even play around with this boss. Get away and heal. Apparently somebody decided to heal me in the meantime. But yeah, don't even play around with this boss, because he will catch you off guard. Now, off guard, off guard armor. I was going to try and make a pun out of that, but it didn't quite work out. Now, why? sometimes this happens. Okay, I was going to say, it wouldn't let me beat him. He had a little tiny bit of HP left, and it wouldn't let me, you know, take it away. I think when that happens, you have to do a combo on him or something like that. But I think this is going to be the cannon technique. There, there it is. That is devastating, so dodge it. Now, what I was going to talk about a second ago was the fact that Square has announced an HD remake pack of Kingdom Hearts 1. And, I, wow, that was fast. He went down fast. Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and 3... I don't really know how to say it correctly. I think it's technically 358 Days Over 2. But I have never said that. But anyway, that's all going to be coming out. HD remakes. I can't believe it. And for beating that boss fight, we actually get Arrow, which is a pretty good magic spell I'll probably be using in the next episode.
Alright guys, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here because it's been pretty long and we actually did get a lot of stuff in this episode done, or a lot of do stuff done in this episode I should say. I want to thank you guys for watching episode 12 of Let's Play Kingdom Hearts and in the next episode I think we might have to do another Bricker Bracky episode where we pick up all the missing pieces and then after that we'll actually continue with the game. But for the final time I want to thank you for watching this episode and I want to see you guys back for the next episode.